A'udhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahman ar-Rahim. Qala rabbish li sadri wa yasir li amri wa luqtatan min li sani. Oh my Lord, open for me my chest and ease my task for me and make loose the knot from my tongue. We praise him. We seek his help. We seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our souls and our misdeeds. And whomever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whomever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none other, that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah, alone without without partners unto him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. And I greet you in the tradition of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So my name is uh, Rishi, and I'm coming to you from Sacramento, California. And I'd like to welcome everyone to another uh, installment of the Friday Reminder. And the topic for today is only God can judge you. Only God can judge you. That said, we should not really be overly concerned about whether what other human beings say about us or how they judge us. We should really be concerned and think about how a law is judging us and how the law is looking at us because he is the only one through his mercy that can grant us grant us paradise. So and and when thinking about this subject, I really what came to mind was the slander of Aisha. Um, it was the slander of Aisha uh, because of what the community was saying and doing um, about uh, her. Um, but our beloved mother Aisha uh, was the daughter of Abu Bakr um, and uh, went on to be the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, so she plays a very, very instrumental role in Islamic history, and she is definitely one of our mothers. So Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, ready Allahu anha, once accompanied the messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on a campaign, on a campaign and was traveling with the caravan. She accidentally got separated from the caravan during the journey and was stranded in the desert. Safwan bin Muwatul, who was traveling separately, happened to get to the same place where she was and seeing her stranded, brought his camel and made it kneel so that she could ride upon it. Then he set out leading the camel until they came up to the army. This gave rise not just to suspicion, but allegations against them with Abdullah bin Ubay bin Saud, the leader of the hypocrites, being foremost in spreading them. He fabricated the lie and whispered it to others until some of the Muslims started to believe it and began to talk about their suspicions. As for Aisha, as she was ill during those days, she did not know that the slander that the people were indulging in. What upset her when she was ill was that she observed the prophet's behavior to have changed towards her. On inquiry, when, when she finally became to know about the slander, for, uh, for from other people, she sought the prophet's permission and went to her parents' home. She said, she said, rumors about this slander went on spreading in the city for about a month, which caused a great distress and anguish to the holy prophet. I cried due to his helplessness, and my parents were sick with uh, with mental agony. The prophet saw remained in great anxiety with regard to Aisha for one whole month. At last, one day he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, visited her and her parents. He sat near her, which she says he had not done since the slander had started. Feeling that some something decisive was going, uh, going to happen that day, Abu Bakr and Umm Ruman, Aisha, uh, Aisha's parents, also sat near them. The Holy Prophet gently said, Aisha, I have heard this about you. If you are innocent, I expect that Allah will declare you innocent. But 
If you have committed the sin, you should offer repentance and ask for Allah's forgiveness. When the servant of Allah confesses his guilt and, and repents, Allah forgives him. Hearing these words, tears dried in her eyes, and Aisha radiallahu anha reported she looked up to her father expecting that he would say something in her defense. But he said, daughter, I do not know what to say. Then she turned to her mother, but she also did not know what to say. At last, Aisha radiallahu anha replied, you have all heard something about me and believed it. Now, if I say that I am innocent and Allah is my witness that I am innocent, you will not believe me. And if I confess something which I never did and Allah knows that I never did, you will, you will not, you will believe me. I cannot but repeat the words which the father of the prophet Yusuf or Joseph had spoken. Fa saburun jamil. I will bear this patiently with good grace. Saying this, she laid, she laid down thinking that Allah was aware of her innocence and he would certainly reveal the truth. At that moment, suddenly a state of receiving the divine revelation appeared on the Holy Prophet وسلم, when pearls like drops of perspiration used to gather on his face when in severe winter. The revelation vindicated her stand and proved her innocence. When it was over, the Prophet Sallallahu was overjoyed. The first words he spoke, well, he spoke were, congratulations, Aisha. Allah has sent down proof of your innocence. And then he recited numerous verses from Surah Nur. And those, surahs, uh, those are the ayats that were revealed to him about her. And the thing that's beautiful about this is that Aisha was part of what's one of the many things that's beautiful about this story is that Aisha was so humble um, that she never would imagine that ayats or, or revelations would be revealed about her that are going to be mortalized in the Holy Quran forever. Um, and that's what we're going to walk through now. These are ayats from Surah Nur, um, Surah tw number 24, um, and ayats number 12 through 22 is what goes over this particular situation. But in the interest of time, we're going to keep it short and just go over a few of the ayats, inshallah ta'ala. So in ayat number 12, I'm sorry, in ayat number uh, 24, I'm sorry, surah number 24, ayat 12. Um, when then did the believer, the, why then did not the believers, men and women, when you heard it, the slander, think good of their own people and say, this is an obvious, obvious lie. Now, from a Sharia and thinking about going deeper into this, um, we need to look at from a Sharia position, what is the difference between backbiting and slandering? Um, and just to explain that, ghilba or backbiting means speaking about a Muslim in his absence and saying things that he would not like to have spread around or mentioned. And buhtan, or slander means saying things about a Muslim that are not true, or in other words, telling lies about him. Abu Huraira reported, the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, do you know what backbiting is? They said, Allah and his messenger know best. The prophet said, to mention your brother in a way he dislikes. It was said, what do you think if what is said is true of him? The prophet said, if what you say about him is true, it is backbiting. If it is not true, it is slander. And that's from Sahih Muslim. Ayat number 13. Why did they not produce four witnesses? Since they, the slanderers, have not produced witnesses, then with the law, they are liars. Now, within Islam, when it comes to adultery and fornication, if someone is going to be accused of that, that is a very, very serious offense. 
Um, and we don't want to take light of that. And we want to make sure that this can be verified. Um, so you have to have four witnesses if you're going to accuse somebody of adultery and fornication. Uh, and this is one of the supporting ayats um, for that particular ruling that you have to have four witnesses to accuse someone of adultery and fornication. Ayah number 14. Had it not been for the grace of Allah and his messenger unto you in this world and in the hereafter, a great torment would have touched you for that whereof you had spoken. Number 15, when you were propagating it with your tongues and uttering it with your mouths, that whereof you had no knowledge, you counted it a little thing, while with Allah, it was a great thing. Now, sometimes we may say something very small and something very minor about an individual, um, or maybe there's a post um, that we can uh, share something on Facebook or other other spaces, and we need to be very careful about that. About that, we definitely want to um, verify the information that we're share that we're sending, um, because it's been said that a person can end up in the hellfire by a small thing that they have said. So we want to be very careful and justify, uh, um, verify the information that we have, and not and not spread uh, untruths. Number 16, and why did you not, when you heard it, say, it is not right for us to speak of this? Glory be to you, O Allah. This is a great lie. Number 17, Allah forbids you from it and warns you not to repeat the like of it forever if you are believers. So once again, we want to not spread rumors. Um, it could be something that we hear about a workmate or another brother or another sister, and we don't want to spread those rumors. We want to think the best of our brothers and sisters, and we don't want to say anything about them that is going to damage their reputation or damage their their, um, their standing within the community. So we want to be very, very careful about that. And this would even count for what those things um, that are online. Um, so just be careful about that. And, and, and number 18, and the law makes the eye out plain to you, and the law is all knowing and all wise. So the law knows everything. The law sees everything. Um, he, and he knows and sees the things that we're doing in this world. And we don't want to do something that's going to affect um, our standing in this world and um, in, the, in the hereafter. And also, if, um, if you're around and someone is actually sharing some information about someone, you don't want to be suspicious about that person, uh, especially if they're Muslim, obviously, but you don't want to be suspicious about them. And in ayat number uh, 49, uh, sorry, surah number 49, ayat number 12, um, Allah reminds us, oh you, oh, you who believe, avoid much suspicion. Indeed, such suspicions are sins and spy not, neither back and spy not neither backbite one another. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate it, so hate backbiting. And fear Allah, very Allah, verily, Allah is the one who accepts repentance, most merciful. Um, and, and there was a situation um, during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where this, this particular man uh, kept coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and was commit and was um, uh, pleading guilty to some things that he had done. Um, and he was going over and over and over uh, saying those things to the Prophet. And, and he had committed a, a major offense. And so he was uh, punished for that. And then later on, someone uh, spoke about that and spoke negatively about that. And the prophet warned that individual. He said, would you like to eat a, the meat of a donkey? And the individual said, no. And he said, well, when you're doing, when you're backbiting and just like eating the flesh of a donkey, you're literally either eating the flesh of your brother. And again, we want to verify the information that's coming to us. Um, and as far as verification, you know, we need to think about and ponder on the story of uh, Dawood, where he was in his home 
and two individuals um, came in into his house. Um, and one of them said, um, my brother has 99 ewes or sheep, and I have one. So he said, entrust her to me. And he overpowered me with, with speech. And Daoud said, he has certainly wronged you in demanding you, you, your ooh in addition to his oohs. And indeed, many associates oppress one another, except for those who believe and do righteous deeds, and few are they. So later on, uh, Daoud started to think about this, and it felt that he had done wrong. And there's sort of a difference of opinion um, in, in terms of what he felt Daoud um, was that, what that wrong was. But it seems the majority opinion was Daoud felt wrong because he didn't confirm or verify the information and talk to the second individual. So all that said, if any bad news comes your way about someone, make sure that you verify that information, but at least maybe check the other side or talk to the other person. Um, look on the other side of the fence and see what's going on before you establish an opinion in your own head. And don't just talk to one side of it and then um, decide that someone is actually right or wrong about uh, a, particular, a particular situation. And in conclusion, I want to say that um, the prophet said in a authentic hadith, verily Allah is the one who forgives and accepts repentance the most merciful. He forgives those who repent to him, is merciful with those who go back to him and trust in him. There is a difference of opinion if one should also never repeat it, feels remorseful, uh, uh, feels re uh, remorseful uh, and or should apologize to the under individuals. But nonetheless, I want to make it clear that slander and that we should never slander and backbite someone. But we I think we've all done it. You know, I think inadvertently uh, we might have said something about someone um, that we did not intend. And I know that I'm guilty of it. And so I'm speaking to myself in, in, in this one. Um, and, but I'm very happy and blessed that we serve a merciful God um, and that if we make repentance, um, and, and we're remorseful for the things that we've said or done, uh, and we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, um, inshallah ta'ala, um, he's going to forgive us, and we especially need that on the day of judgment. And Abu Dawood recorded that Abu Khalada said that the messenger of Allah said, all of the Muslims is sacred to, a Muslim, to the Muslim, his wealth, honor, and his blood. In this evil it is evil enough for someone to belittle his Muslim brother. Lastly, the Allah is the creator and sustainer of all that exists. Uh, and it is he alone who, um, who will judge us on the day of judgment. Um, we should not necessarily be concerned about other people judging, judging us. As I said in the beginning, just be concerned about Allah judging you. Just be concerned that you are doing and saying the right things so that when Allah sees you, he sees that you're actually doing the right thing. And last but not, not, not least, remember that only God can judge you. If I've said anything wrong, it is from my own soul. If I've said anything right or beneficial that you uh, enjoyed, uh, it's from Allah and from Allah alone. Subhanaka wa bihamdika ashadu wa la ila ila anta astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk. Aadu billah min shaitan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa lasr. And now in sana lafi khusr. Ila ladina amanu wa amilu salam. Hati wa tawasa bil haqqi wa tawasa bil salam.